Hey everybody! Today our auto runs through the golden sails. I have no idea how to say this in the original Russian, but here it is in English. See the golden sails. I'm going to be doing a two-play run through, so you can see what this little neat card drafting game is all about. I've already got it set up. Here I am, first player. Here Jen is, second player. These are our experts, and we will be using them to draft cards from this deck to score a lot of points. Now in this game, we have been sailing all over the kingdom, going from port to port to port, and in every port, we are going to collect one card. And each one of these cards is really kind of unique because it can be one of five different items. It can be rare mystical creatures, it can be exotic spices, it can be nasty weapons, it can be spells, or it could be gems, one of the five. Whichever one it's going to be is based on which of our experts we deploy out to the dock. And I'm just going to get going. Now, before we set up, we have to find out what the demand is for different types of animals. Let's see, we get this one. So, they uh, they want unicorns back home. A single unicorn is worth one point. Three unicorns is worth 12 points. A phoenix and a dragon is six. A giant spider, a dragon and a unicorn is worth nine, etc. And you can see, I mean, this on the other side, this is a player aid. So, everybody gets a player aid, and then from the remaining player aids, we pick one. But, you know, it, it could have gone a different way. There's several different ways that the creatures score. But we went with this one. And we have just now arrived in port, which means we draw cards equal to the number of players, two players. So we're going to draw two cards and let the drafting begin. So each one of these cards, again, could be a spice, a creature, a weapon, a spell, or a gem. I am the first player because I got the first player card. And what that means is I send one of my experts out to the docks and I will lock in what one of these cards will be. So if I send my Beastmaster over here, I would go ahead and put it like this to say that this card is now a giant spider. It can't be this weapon or this spice or this number three gem or this spell. It has to be the spider. Now, because maybe I want to collect the spider because, as you can see, a spider plus a phoenix is worth six points, as an example. Um, or maybe I want to collect spices because each one of these five different things scores in a different way. The creatures score uniquely every time you play, depending on which one of these comes out. The spices score, you want to have a variety. You want to have a bunch of unique ones. If you only have one type of spice, you get two points at the end of the game. If you have each type of spice, you get 30 points. And it doesn't matter. You don't want multiples. Having a multiple of the same type of spice is worth nothing. So you want to always get unique spices. And there's six different types. That's how spices score. Um, weapons score kind of like the military in, what do you call it, um, uh, uh, Seven Wonders, where, you know, if I had this weapon at the end of the game, I will steal two points from the player to my left and zero points to the player to my right. This boomerang, two points to the player to my right, nothing to the player to my left. The interesting thing, though, is weapons can get confiscated when you get back home. So you're not allowed to have more than one of a given type. If I, ever, if I take this boomerang weapon, and then later on, I end up getting another boomerang, which would be kind of dangerous for me, then suddenly none of my boomerangs work because they get confiscated. So I've got to have unique ones, um, you know, which is kind of true for the spices as well. But it doesn't matter if you get duplicates. If I get duplicates of the weapon, they kind of get wiped out. The spells, they all do special case powers and scoring and whatnot. And the way the gems work is you're trying to get straights. So if I end up getting this three gem, I'm going to want to get twos and fours. If I, and at the end of the game, if I have, say, gems that are a, a 2, a 3, and a 4, I count the number of gems I've gotten a straight and square it. So 3 gems in a straight, that's 9 points. So anyway, these are the two goods. I'm going to be the first player. And what the heck, I will go on ahead and declare that this first one, let's see. You know, actually, I'll declare that this one's a phoenix because a single phoenix by itself is worth two points, or a phoenix plus a dragon is worth six. So I'll take my weapon or my uh, beastmaster, and this is now a phoenix. Now Jen, she's going to do the same thing. She's going to take one of hers and define what this card is because this one is now locked in place. It can't be this spice or the boomerang, etc., etc. So what is Jen going to turn this one into? She will go on ahead and turn this one into some delicious spice. All right, now. In a turn order, or in a round, 
First, the cards get dealt number of players. Then, in turn order, each player defines what one of the cards are. Then, in reverse turn order, we start taking them. So I declared what this is, Jen declared what this is, and now in reverse turn order, Jen gets to take one of these, and I take the other one. Now, right now, these are both good. And in the first round, there's nothing bad. Everything you can get is good. But once you get a boomerang, you want to make sure you never get another boomerang. Once you give a certain type of spice, you don't want that type of spice again. Once you get a certain gem, you want other gems that are adjacent to it in a straight. Once you get a certain type of creature, you have specific type of creatures you want to get. So, um, you know, it gets trickier and trickier to get the stuff you need. Let's see. So I'll go on ahead and oops. Oh, whoopsie. I did that wrong. I put the creature here. I, I, I put the Beastmaster here. So um, this would have meant nothing. Well, this still meant I made this a Phoenix, but I should have put this here so everybody can see it's Phoenix. I want the Phoenix. I'm going to take the Phoenix. So I take that. I add it to my hold. And my Beastmaster gets discarded. Jen, her spice thing gets discarded. She's taken these spices. Now, normally what you would do is, um, you know, if, again, if I had all these cards in front of me, I'd take it. And then later on, if I get another spice, I claim it like this. And hey, look, I've got two unique spices. I get another one. Hey, I've got three unique spices. But right now, I'm just doing these sideways. Um, so from Jen's perspective, you imagine she's here. She just grabbed this spice. I just grabbed this creature. The first port has been left behind, and now Jen will be the first player. We come into the new port, and Jen will be the first to declare um, what it's going to be, and then I'll be the first to be able to grab one. Let's see here. So it's a dragon. It's a different type of spice. Now, Jen does not want this type of spice. That type of spice is useless to her because she's already got one. So... Um, but anyway, Jen is the first player. She's going to declare what one of these are. Uh, let's see. And interestingly, oh, this is really interesting. I've got that phoenix. I want a dragon pretty badly because if I can get that dragon, a dragon plus a phoenix is worth six points at the end of the game. So what Jen does not want to do is turn either of these into a dragon because then I'll get it. Because remember, she's going to declare. I'm going to... All right. So she doesn't want to make these a dragon. Um, and neither of these spices are good for her. So this spell increases the power of boomerangs. This spell gives you plus one point at the end of the game for every spice you've got. You'll notice all the different things. Spices are always circles. The creatures are always hexes. The weapons are always this square. The uh, gems are always diamonds. And the spells are always this oval. So this is saying circle, which means spice. Every spice is worth a point. So Jen's already got one spice. If she decides she's going to go heavy into spices, that might make sense for her. So she will go on ahead and grab her spell. Master, and she has turned this card into a spell. Right, so now uh, she's done. So now it's my turn, and here's the thing. I want this dragon. I want this dragon bad so I can mix it with my um, Phoenix, but unfortunately, I've already used my um, Creature Master. I can only turn this card into a gem, a spice, a weapon, or a spell. So I can't get what I want. Now, if Jen had very uh, kindly turned this into a dragon, you better believe I would have grabbed this because I want that dragon. But Jen saw that, and so she opted not to do that. She tried to make a spell. So now it's my turn, and I've got to decide. Um, I will make this into something, and then I'll grab both. So, you know, I could turn this into a spice, and then, hey, both Jen and I are competing on spices as an example. But here's the thing. Jen declared this as a spell. I could claim this for myself. So just because Jen made the spell doesn't mean she's necessarily going to get it. Or, you know, I could go on ahead and say, hey, yeah, I'm just going to go on ahead and take this weapon, and, um, and then I'll have a boomerang. Now, like I said, normally at the end of the game, if you had this boomerang, you'd hit everybody to the left, you'd steal two points from them, and everybody to the, or, you know, the player to the right, you'd steal one point. In a two-player game, the way it works is, at the end of the game, if you have several weapons all lined up in a row, remember, they all have to be unique, so, like, if, I, if I've got three weapons, at the end of the game, in a two-player game, I would choose, am I going to attack my opponent with the left side or the right side? Now, obviously, in this case, I would attack with the left side, because that means I would steal five points. So, anyway, that's how it works in a two-player game. So, let's go ahead and put this back. D -d -d. Right, it was this dragon. Okay. So, what do I want? Um, what you know, I mean, this weapon I can never do. I'll go on ahead and make this a weapon, and I'll claim it as a weapon. So, now I've got some weapons. I'm prepared to attack Jen. My weapon master goes away. And so, now here's the interesting thing. Um, the first player to declare what a card is is the last player to get one. And that player has a special bonus they can do. Jen can now take this. 
as a uh, as a spell, like what she originally said, or she could change her mind. All of a sudden, she could do a quick switcheroo, and now that I can't get anymore, she could recall this, put it back over here, and change it into something else. So she could get the dragon. And suddenly, I was like, oh, because dragons could be combined with phoenixes or a spider and a unicorn to be worth nine points. So Jen did a quick switcheroo. She didn't want me to have the dragon. She said it was a, a spell. But now, because again, that's something only first player can do. Uh, when it comes back to you, you can change using one of your remaining experts. Jen just got herself a dragon. I'm like, no. Anyway, and so now this gets discarded. And um, so we've each got, I've now got a boomerang. I'm going to be hitting Jen with the boomerang at the end. I've got my Phoenix, which is worth two points. Jen's got a dragon, which by itself is worth nothing. But there's two different sets she could be going for with that dragon. And um, we now, I will be the first player again. We move on to the third port of call, where we've got a unicorn, a new type of spice, boomerangs, and a spell that says, hey, you get four points if, for every set of these two types of spices you've got. And let's see, a number eight gem, a different type of weapon, uh, ooh, a phoenix. You better believe I want that phoenix, because then that phoenix can combine with my dragon. I'm sorry, I should say Jen. Jen wants that phoenix. So anyway, let's see what we're going to do. Um, I'm the first, so once again, I've got these three experts left. I can pick either of these to turn them into a gem, a spice, uh, or a spell, because all my other stuff is gone. Let's see here. And what do I want to do? I think I will. I don't want another Phoenix necessarily. But here's the thing. I know Jen doesn't want this spice, right? Because she already has it, so she does not want a second version of that spice. So I'm going to go on ahead and turn this. And now I have just made this card useless for Jen. She has no interest in getting that card now. All right, so now Jen's got to declare this to be something. And <laughs> so, oh. Wow, that's interesting. So what Jen could do is, she could turn this into a weapon and then leave it for me. And I already have a boomerang, so I don't want a second boomerang. Because remember, if you have too many of, if you have a multiples of the same weapon, they get confiscated and they're worth nothing. So Jen could turn this into a boomerang and it's suddenly useless for me. But Jen would have to take this spice that she doesn't want. So she's not going to do that. Because she, this card is useless to her, so she's got to decide. She could make this a spell, she could make this a gem, or she could make this a weapon. So she could have a boomerang to attack me back, but I don't think so. Jen, she's going to turn this into a, a gem. It's a, it's a number four gem. All right. And so, uh, you know, now in reverse turn order, Jen, she won't take that spice because it's no good to her. So she will go on ahead and take a gem. Now the gems are the interesting ones. Everything else, you take it, you leave it face up so everybody can see what you're collecting. Uh, Jen's got this spice. She's got this dragon. The, the gems, when you collect them, you declare. You remind everybody, hey, I got a number four, and then you put it face down. It stays secret what that gem is. But if I can remember that Jen has a four, I know she wants threes or fives to start making a straight. So I've got to remember that, a little bit of a memory element in the game. So anyway, so Jen took a gem, and now that comes back to me, and hey, I can get this spice if I want, or I can switch this around. I can change my mind and turn this into a spell, because maybe I didn't want that spice. Maybe I'd rather have a gem of my own, and a number eight gem, or this spell that says, interestingly, I get two points for every spell I get including this one. So this card could be implicitly worth two points, and if I get more spells, it just is worth more and more and more. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a switcheroo and turn this into a spell, uh, because again, I'm the first player, so I have that special power, and I have now collected a spell. I've got a creature, a weapon, and a spell. Jen's got a gem, a creature, and a spice. And we are now coming into our fourth port. And this is important, because you'll notice we are starting to run out of masters. Uh, we each only have two left. Right. Oh, and Jen's going to be first in this fourth port. So what's going to happen is it's still going to work the same. We're going to declare what these two are. Each of us is going to get one of these. And then after this fourth port is done, we get all of our masters back. These guys, they're all off resting and recuperating. Once we finish this fourth port, we'll get them all back, and we have total control over what we can, um, what we can draft for again. So anyway, what does Jen want? Does Jen want a unicorn? A, unicor a single unicorn is worth a point. No. Yeah, Jen's that dragon. If Jen gets a unicorn and a spider, that's nine. So Jen would like, particularly because I've got a phoenix, and unicorns don't work well with phoenixes at all. So 
And although, oh, Jen's already used. So Jen can either make a spell or a weapon, her choice. She knows I've got a boomerang. So if she does this, she has basically made this card useless to me. Um, but she, and she can still take it for herself. Uh, so, or does she want a spell? This spell, once again, is one where it makes uh, spices worth an additional point. Oh, wow, they're both. Both of these are spells that make spices worth more points. So if she, um, hmm, or does she, no, I think she's just going to block off this boomerang. Really kind of as a defensive measure. Um, all right, all right, okay. So she'll do that. And now me, I've got spice or I've got gem. I forgot what Jen, yeah, this was a four. Jen didn't really want this six or this two. So anyway, I've got to turn this thing into a number six gem or some spices. Hmm. Yeah, and Jen would love, you know, would love to get this spice. Uh, um, now she's kind of regretting. By turning this into a card I don't want, you know, I could have turned this into a spice and then left it so she could grab it because I might have grabbed something over here that was more valuable. But Jen made this something I don't want. So I think, am I going to go for this spice? Or, no, no, mm, yeah. Or am I going to go for my own gem and get this level six gem? Because I'm surely not going to take that boomerang. Okay. Uh, I think I will. But heck, I'll get a gem as well. So I've got a number six gem. All right. Oh, I, no, actually, well, I've chosen. Now I could take either of these. I'm not going to take this boomerang that's no good to me because there's multiple. So I'm going to take this gem and I tell everybody at the table, I got a six. And so Jen needs to remember, I don't, she doesn't want me to be able to get fives or sevens. And just like I don't want her to get, so we're both competing for fives because she's got a four, I've got a six. So we both want five gems to make straights. So anyway, that's that. And so now it comes back around to Jen. She can go with this boomerang, which at the end of the game, she'll, I'm already stealing two points from her. She could just steal those two points right back. It, or she can turn this into a spell and make her spices worth more. Although right now, this is worth two points at the end of the game. This is only worth one. But if she gets more spices, it'll be worth more and more and more. I think she's going to take the spell instead. All right. So she took a spell. And right. And that was it. So we're moving on to the fifth of, what is it, 12. We are, we're going to hit 12 ports over the course of the game. The game plays for 12 rounds. And now we get all of our old experts back. All right. So, um, bop, 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 bop. Here's my experts. And here's Jen's experts. And we are ready to um, approach a new port again, where there's a unicorn, there's a two, neither of particularly want a two, and there's a six. I, Jen knows I, if she can remember that I've got a six, if she, you know, she could potentially block this from me because I know she knows I don't want another six. Actually, I could have another six because you can have multiple straights. But still, that's I mean, I'd rather have a five or a seven. But anyway, so I'm up first. I've got all my experts back. I can go on ahead and declare. And let's see here. A uh, unicorn. Again, a unicorn is no good for my phoenix. Jen really wants a unicorn, though, to match with her dragon. And there's two unicorns out here. So... Now, both of these are new weapons, so I could take either of these weapons and add it to my overall armory. But here's a tricky thing. You know, at the end of the game, here's really my, so I'm going to have it attacked in with this two side, not with the one. If I end up getting this weapon, that's kind of a problem because, well, hey, if I attack with this two, I'm also attacking with a zero. So I'd suddenly want to attack from the other side. So this weapon doesn't work well with the weapon I've already got. So you can see how once you've got a few cards, every time um, a new round starts, there are cards, there are... Items you want and items you don't want. So, but this weapon would work well because, hey, then I'd have two weapons attacking from one side, so I'd be hitting Jen for four points at the end of the game. So, and the main thing is, remember, I don't want Jen to get, so I'm going to go on ahead, I'm going to double down on weapons, and I'm going to hope that I get this weapon. Jen hasn't gone down that route at all yet. And so Jen, meanwhile, she says, oh, hey, look, a new spice I don't have. Remember, she also gets a bonus points for every spice. So she'll take that. And since she's a second player, she'll claim it. And Jen now has two spices. And her spice card is gone. And so that's uh, two squared. So that's four points. But it's really six because she's got this spell. Uh, she just wants to keep, or, sorry, oh, no, you don't, you don't square the spices. What is it? It's, yeah, no, actually it is. Um, it's four, eight, 12. Uh, yeah, so. Jen's very happy with that, and I'm happy with the weapon I got. Everybody got what they wanted at this port. And now let's move on to port number five. And, ooh, okay, a four and an eight. Where are the fives? Um, 
I mean, I could get this 8, uh, which, and then if I eventually get a 7, then I'd have a straight of a 7, 8, 9. Also, there is a, you might, depending on what comes out, there's also a spell that you could potentially grab that lets you change the value of one of your gems, so you can increase or decrease to ensure you get that straight. But look at this. Um, from Jen's perspective, she's eyeballing, she wants this spice, this lavender, so that that would be her third unique type. She doesn't want these chili peppers, though. And I haven't bothered with spices at all. Uh, but I don't want either of these weapons. Um, Jen does want this phoenix. No. Well, if she takes the phoenix, a phoenix plus a dragon isn't bad. It's six points instead of going for the nine pointer. Oh, but there's the spider. Uh, here's this, I want this spider. Sat down beside her because a spider and a phoenix is six points. But, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so Jen's first. And what is she going to choose? <sighs> so, here's the thing. If she's paying attention, she'll notice, I want this spider. Because the spider plus the phoenix is six points. So that means it kind of behooves her to turn this card into something else so that I can't get what I want. And hopefully it's something she wants then. This spell means two points for every unicorn. This spell means two points for every gem you get. Or one point for every gem. Hmm, let's see. Plus, now Jen would like to get this unique, uh, what do you call it, the, the unique... Uh, Spice, but Jen can't declare spices anymore because she's already used that. So she can get, the, if she's going to make this not be a spider because she doesn't want me to have it, then she could turn this into a unicorn spell, a boomerang. Now that's interesting. She knows I don't want a boomerang or a spider. So she just turns this into a boomerang. She doesn't mind getting that because it's a way to steal points from me. And she has eliminated two of the things I want on that. I'm like, no, I want the spider. So she'll go ahead and do that. And then remember, it's going to come back around her. She doesn't have to keep it like this. She could turn it into a creature or a gem or a, uh, a spell later on. All right, so Jen has gone ahead and done that. So she's left me with this. Now, what do I want this to be? I could go into the spice. I could get a second phoenix. But each phoenix is only worth two. Hmm. I don't need more shurikens because I've already got shurikens, so I can't get a second one. I could get this spell that um, means every gem, because I, I see. Or what was it? What was mine? I have a six. If I go on ahead and turn this gem into a four and I take it, then I've got a six and a four. If I can just get a five, I've got a nice little straight that'll be worth nine points. But I, but if I pay attention, I can remember Jen wants a five as well. So it's kind of dangerous to go for that. Um, and I know I'm not going to take this because Jen has basically marked this card as useless to me. So, do I want another Phoenix or do I want to try and start fighting Jen for spices? Hmm. Or do I want to bump up my... No, I'll, I'll go for the spell. I'll try to double down on gems. Because this means if I get gems and even if they don't work towards my straight, each gem is worth a point. So I've created... I've made, turned this into a spell. Now I can take the boomerang. That's no good for me. So instead, I'll go on ahead and take this spell. And now I've got a spell. Woo. So I've got a gem. Oh, no. It's, this is my second spell I've gotten. So I've got a spell that encourages me to get more spells. And I've got a spell that encourages me to get more gems. So I'm starting to get... And I've got some weapons. And I've got one creature. And then it comes back to Jen. So now she can decide, does she want this boomerang that she'd be able to steal two points from me? Does she want a spider? Yes. But, yeah, so she's going to call back this weapon because that was a way to, um, to basically reserve it for her. She'll use the creature now, and boom, she just got a spider that sat down beside her. Now, if she can just get a unicorn, she's got this little set for nine points. Boom. All right. Then um, we're going to move on to the next port. Two things come out. Let's see. It's a seven. Ooh. That's good. Is it for me? Because I think I've got a six. Yeah, I want that number seven gem. Because every gem is worth a bonus point, plus that's a good straight for me. And a three, which is good for Jen. She wants that gem because she has a four. Interesting. Although by this point, we're kind of, do we remember which uh, numbers each other has? All right. Oh, and it's a dragon. I want that dragon for, ooh. So I want that. I want that. I don't want the shuriken. I would like to have this as a unique type of weapon. Jen would happily take either of these spices because they're both new spices to her. Um, this is another unicorns are worth points, but we haven't seen many unicorns. I don't think anybody wants this particular spell. Um, and 
Let's see. Uh, oh, and then this spell is interesting. This is a wild card spell. At the end of the game, before we do final scoring, you could say, oh, I, when I took this, it was a spell, but because it's a wild card, at the end of the game, I can turn it into a weapon, this dragon, this gem, or this. So that's a really cool card. Let's see. So i got to pick what I'm going to do, and I'm down to my um, gem. So I could make this seven, because I know Jen doesn't want that seven, and I do. And I'm you know, cutting off that. Let's see. And, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. or I could go for the creature, because I do want either of these dragons, or I could go for, but I, I don't think I want to go for the spice, because I, I think by now the ship has sailed on spices for me. I don't want to start into spices halfway through the game, because this is a quick game, so I don't think I'm going to use this for spice. Although, remember, that's the other thing. I'm the first player, so when it comes back around to me, I could change one of these cards um, instead of being a gem, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, so what am I going to do? Well, I think what I'm going to do is stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of the overall flow of golden sales. And now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts about this game, you can hit the little I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.